appreciation to Deputy Prime Minister Maria Gabriel for unwavering commitment to advancing women entrepreneurship across Europe and for initiating the European Female Founders Forum in 2022 here in Sofia. Returning to this beautiful city two years later to launch our project Investor is just a truly uh, remarkable opportunity and I'm really grateful for that. I want to extend one thanks to Amchan Bulgaria, Mr. Ivan Mihailov and his dedicated team for this great event and for giving us the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. So yes, yes, two years ago on May 13th, we were here, a group of 40 women founders invited, coming from everywhere in Europe, invited to form the European Female Founders Forum because figures speak for themselves and with less than 2% of VC capital going to, to women-led only companies, some, there's an urge to do something and to take action. So we need to change the situation for women entrepreneurs in Europe and to tackle the funding divide in the innovation ecosystem. On a mission to inspire, encourage and act to support women entrepreneurship for an inclusive and diverse European innovation ecosystem, the forum prioritized three main pillars identified as the most important and urgent to be addressed. Education, as we already discussed, with the aim to foster future women entrepreneurs, communities to build a strong and diverse ecosystem, and funding to tackle the gender divide in ventures and public funding. On March the 8th, exactly one year ago, under the patronage of the European Commission, and with the continuous support of Mrs. Gabrielle, we organized our very first summit. We presented our main findings and actions and proposed action to the 100 representative of the community who joined us in Brussels. In education, there is a need to empower girls with entrepreneurial skills. We should convert women in science and technology into founders, or at least raise the awareness that there's an opportunity there. We need to discipline women leadership in growing ventures. When it comes to communities, there's a lack of connection between female founders and leaders with European innovation communities. We need to provide better support around cooperation, know-how exchange, and support for to go to market and other strategies. Empowering the next generation of female founders, future or current, is crucial to break the initial barriers of starting their own projects. When it comes to funding, the European investment ecosystem is fragmented and the situation is even worse for women entrepreneurs. The funding gap stays persistent. There are strong stereotypes on women's capacity on running success successful businesses. The lack of diversity and homophily needs to be addressed as well as the lack of visibility of women-led companies. There is limited information on impact and outreach of successful female-led companies creating obstacles to attract more female founders. And because we know that, female entrepreneurs on average generate 150% more revenue for each euro invested than men. Venture firms with women partners are two times more likely to invest in women-led businesses. And closing the gender gap in business could increase global GDP by 26%. It's time to take action and make the change we want to see. To do so, we understand that we need to have strong and interconnected ecosystem to support business growth, and that strengthening and expanding the cooperation between innovation players is paramount to achieve a more competitive EU and a more sustainable, inclusive, diverse and resilient world. Uh, it's with immense pride and gratitude that we are here today to officially launch the investor project. Thanks to the support of the European Commission in its funding program, the project has been granted 1 million euros to strengthening and expanding cooperation between founders and investors and engaging with stakeholders across different European regions, creating bridges between the European innovation ecosystem and boosting women entrepreneurship. Over the next 24 months, Investor will build a solid and sustainable network of investors to support women entrepreneurs in Europe and beyond. We will create a digital platform 
to support investors and connect them with startups. We will develop and propose tailored trainings and coaching to hundreds of women in founders and investors. And we will launch a syndicate with at least 50 new investors ready to invest in women entrepreneurs. Investor is, is already counting on a broad and diverse community in Europe and beyond, from a solid consortium and its international advisory committee to the support of external partners. It's now a great pleasure to invite on stage representative from our consortium, Milena Sancheva, chair of the board, Dear BG, Bulgaria, Salome Le Goff, responsible of programs at Villa, France, Maria Oliveira, managing director at Upitec, Portugal, and Diane Neva, founder and executive director at Grit, Ireland. I will bring my own chair. So, ladies, thank you very much for being here with us today. So, we will be working together on the implement implementation of this amazing project, and uh, it's a great pleasure to count you with your solid experience and expertise uh, to, to come and to, to build this network. So, to start with, I think because we, you're all coming from different uh, background and environment and places, uh, I would like to invite you first to present yourself and your organization and also to give you words on what motivated you to join the investor project and why do you think we need to take action, specific action, to support women entrepreneurs. I want to start with you, Maria, because I know your time is counted and uh, you have a plane to catch, so here you go. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I need to say that it's a great pleasure to be here and congratulations to all women that are in the room for this day. Uh, and I'm really sad that I will need to leave in about, I would say, less than five minutes. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. So UPTEC is the science and technology park of University of Porto. We are one of the largest incubators in Portugal. This means we support around 200 entrepreneurial projects per year. And we are talking about a very um, young community, 35 years old average. I feel quite old when I'm in the ecosystem. And also we are talking about a very multicultural community. We have 44 nationalities at the park. I'm very proud to say that we are very uh, committed to promote gender equality because in the team of UPTEC, we have 66% of women. Uh, in the board, we have the same percentage of women. And when we're talking about female entrepreneurship, we have 24% of female-led uh, company startups. But saying this means that we are kind of uh, uh, an example for the Portuguese ecosystem because the reality is not like that. So in a recent study of uh, Startup Portugal, uh, they accounted for 4,000 startups in the country, active startups with less than 10 years. And of those startups, mostly are in ICT. So uh, I heard the words on the, the previous panel. And Portugal is also above average in terms of the females working in ICT as 20%. But when we look into the leadership of these companies, it only accounts for 40%, so it's quite low still. And then when we look into other data, because I really like um, to show some numbers, because you know, normally we say we cannot hide from the numbers, even if there are a lot of justifications that we can use and there are a lot of reasons why women are underrepresented in most of these sectors. Uh, but when you look into the numbers and we look into Portugal, did you know that we are ranked sixth among the countries that have uh, uh, business owned by women? So the sixth in the world. This means there are a lot of business in Portugal owned by women, but then only 6% of the CEOs in Portugal are women. So what's happening here? Why can't we not translate these numbers into more women in leadership? We all talked about the reasons that are behind I don't think women are more adverse to risk. I think women are more afraid to fail. They feel that they have this weight in their shoulders that if they fail, they will be judged, while men are more relaxed about it. And I think that we need to really, you know, change takes generations to implement when we're talking about cultural change. But we need to speed this up. Because otherwise, this gap is going to continue, and I'm even afraid it's going to increase if we 
are not more aggressive in promoting policies. Uh, and when I'm talking about policies, it's really public policies that will help and support uh, to promote more startups that are led by women. Just for you to have a, an idea, and I'm sorry for taking all the time, but I will leave right away. Uh, just for you to have a, a, a perspective. 50% uh, of the active population in Portugal is women. Uh, we have more women than men as well in the general population. And when we look to higher education, we have 35, over 35% of women with higher education against 25% of men. So we have the numbers in terms of population and we have the numbers in terms of education. So we have the conditions to, to change this. We just have to change the mindset. And talking about mindset, it's not only the men mindset, but also the female mindset in order for us to be able to, to succeed. I I'm just want to give you an example uh, because I recently talked with um, a Portuguese founder of uh, an ICT company and I was um, asking him about um, gender diversity, but in general, uh, diversity and inclusion in his company. And he said, we don't need to talk about that uh, because it's out there. We hire for talent. I don't care if it's a guy or a girl, we hire for talent. He was saying that and I, I thought this is a bit weird and I was looking into the numbers. So this is um, what we call a high growth company in Portugal, possibly on the track to become a an unicorn. And uh, basically uh, the team is four males founders. And uh, the team working in the company right now, I think they are over 80, it's more than 80% guys. I really had a problem looking to the rooster of the company to find women. So the question is, who's applying for those jobs? Are women able to go, in that, in, to go in, in work in that environment? Or immediately is pool to hire talent is really short. So it's not hiring the best candidate. It's hiring the best candidate between most of the guys that are applying for that job. So we need to change this mentality. I'm really in favor of implementing public incentives for having quotas, because we've seen that whenever um, quotas are applied in politics or even in public companies, they tend to work. And it's not enough to say, ah, oh, we have 20% of our workforce represented by female. We really need to insert change. And I'm so in favor of creating funds, and I'm now I'm talking about VC funds, which is the objective of InvestHer, um, which have quotas or which have specifically dedicated to female founders. So I will leave it at here because I know my colleagues have a lot of points they want to, to raise as well. Thank you very much for this opportunity and for being here in this amazing city. I hope to get back very soon. So. Thank you so much. And you're fully apologized. So should we continue with you, Salome? What were your motivation behind joining this consortium and where are you from and uh, what is Vila? So hello everyone, I'm very pleased to be here today. My name is Salome and I'm responsible of programs at Wila. Uh, Wila is a French nonprofit organization that was founded 19 years ago. And our main mission is to strive for more diversity in innovation and in entrepreneurship. So we accompany over 500 women each year and over 150 women-led startups each year in their development everywhere in France. As I said, our main mission is to boost diversity in entrepreneurship and innovation, and we do that with two main actions. So on one hand, we accompany and train these women um, and work on their internal barriers. And on the other hand, we really work to raise awareness within the other stakeholders in the ecosystem to deconstruct existing uh, conscious and unconscious gender biases that still remain. So of course, with 19 years of experience in the entrepreneurial sector, we have seen the both internal and external limitations and barriers and biases that still exist, not only within the women, but also from the partners and stakeholders. And so when we learned of the investor project, it felt, uh, it felt evident that we had to join the fight. Thank you, and we are absolutely uh, proud and happy to count you in. Monica, I mean, you have so multiple hats. You're just an inspiration for many of us. So what is your uh, motivation for joining us? Uh, thank you. Is it working? Yeah, great. 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone in this room for the International Women's Day. It's an amazing opportunity for all of us to meet. And uh, I want to really say special thanks to American Chamber of Commerce in Bulgaria and the CEO Ivan Mikhailov and the dedicated team of the Chamber for organizing this event and this amazing opportunity to be here today. And to tell you about our, our project, um, a little bit about myself. I've been starting my um, journey as an entrepreneur a long time ago. It was like maybe 25 years ago, so it's really a long time. Before that, I was working as a journalist in the Bulgarian National Television. And uh, starting my entrepreneurship um, experience is, was not very easy at that time because the, the access to finance was very, very limited. We didn't have any opportunities then to apply for venture capital funding. The only available um, instruments for finance were banks. And um, yeah, I've, I've, I can say I had a very difficult journey to the, uh, to, the, to the success, I would say. So I founded my own PR company, which um, uh, five years after I uh, founded it, became the, the leading PR company in the country. And later, a couple of years ago, I became the chair of the board of the biggest uh, web portal, the RBG, where um, I can, I hear something very nice as an expression from the Minister of Innovation, Mrs. Stoicheva, transformative leader. I'd like to see myself like a transformative leader because I, I'd like to, to do change, change for good in the companies and the places where I'm working. So uh, currently, um, I'm also an angel investor. For the last five years, I'm investing in promising startups uh, in Bulgaria, and I help them really to grow with um, not only with the financial support, but also with mentorship and trying to create skills in the founders, within the teams of the founders of those companies, and trying to bring more women energy and more women, successful women leaders within those companies. So I, you know, I, I can say I, I'm trying to support and I'm supporting women founders with my, uh, my own resources and my, um, uh, my skills as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Last but not least, Diane. I mean, you're also a very uh, strong, active uh, woman in uh, in the ecosystem. I mean, uh, please tell us more about Grit and uh, you. what you're doing. Thank you, and Charlotte. And I just want to say to Monica, um, I congratulate you because you certainly are a woman for change in terms of an advocate for change. So congratulations. Um, in regards to that, and I just want to say Happy International Women's Day to everybody. Um, so I'm based in Ireland, and. Um, I'm CEO and a founder of Grit International and Female Accelerator. So we work with women that are raised in venture capital, in digital health, and um, all sorts of life science. Uh, we are, I guess our mission and our vision is to really promote and support women that needs to, uh, really needs a huge considerable amount of money to get to the next stage. And I'm really passionate around the investor project. I feel that it's going to have a huge impact and I'm really inspired, I think, as a partnership. We have an amazing group of um, inspiring and the expertise in the room, and I feel that we have a big, major impact to make. Thank you. And uh, to go back to uh, Salome and Willa, I mean, you just released uh, recently a report uh, presenting the portrait of innovation entrepreneurship for women in France. Do you want to tell, tell us more about it? How does it look like? And, uh... Yes, yes, absolutely, with pleasure. Indeed, we recently released a report in French uh, in partnership with Roland Berger, which is a famous consulting group, and France Digital, which is a key actor in the tech landscape in, in France. And in this report, we interviewed over 500 female and male entrepreneurs um, in France, once again, because we wanted to be able to associate key figures to some intuitions 
that we have had uh, by meeting uh, different entrepreneurs over the years. And we really wanted to be able to capture the specificities in male and female entrepreneurial backgrounds uh, today. Um, and so we interviewed these 500 uh, entrepreneurs and the key findings were actually quite telling. Some of them we expected, some we were a little bit more um, uh, not shocked, but intrigued by. Uh, but the first key findings that we could perhaps share, and they were, they were things that were also said by the other panelists earlier today, is that women have a tendency to wait much longer to get into entrepreneurship today. Um, and they actually don't consider, uh, at least in France, entrepreneurship as an initial career path or as a possibility for them. And the figures were, were quite intriguing. Most women wait sometimes over 10 years uh, before getting into entrepreneurship because they believe that they have to get hands-on experience on the field in order to be legitimate uh, to become entrepreneurs and the, the numbers uh, on the male aspect are much lower and they tend to start much earlier. So we can see that there are still internal biases um, even inside women that we need to deconstruct today and that they have a special relationship in regard to entrepreneurship. And then uh, to come back to the investor project, there were also some really interesting figures uh, concerning um, women entrepreneurs, women founders, and their relationship to raising funds and their relationship to the growth uh, of their businesses. Uh, we saw that women have a tendency to uh, launch their businesses with less capital than men. And this is unfortunately due to uh, the lingering um, inequalities when it comes to salary, of course. And we also saw that they don't prioritize growth uh, the same way that men do. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more conservative and their number one priority is profitability. And indeed, in the, in the 500 women we interviewed, only 17% of them went to raise funds. So we can see that there's still um, enormous disparities today, even in the, the French entrepreneurial ecosystem when it comes to men and women founders and their relationship to raising funds. Yeah, that's very interesting. And actually, I would be interesting to know how it is with uh, Grit. I mean, you also run an accelerator for women, more specifically in the life science and uh, healthcare. But so, do you do you experience or do you see similar findings when it comes to the women entrepreneur that you welcome in your different cohorts? Oh, absolutely. And that was the mission behind developing the Grit program: is that again the numbers that you mentioned here throughout the day, two percent of funding going to female. Um, founders, so we wanted to really improve that metric overall. And I think um, another part of the purpose of our program is to really promote and support women and for them to understand the challenges around that. So again, we've spoken about um, the type of questions perhaps that women are asked by venture capitalists when they're pitching as opposed to male um, founders. Um, so we've worked with, again, investors to have a discussion in terms of these type of questions because I certainly think it is unconscious bias that maybe they may not be aware that they are asking particular questions, but I do feel it's a lot around the questions because the questions that women are asked, they're asked more risk-averse questions, where men are asked more promotional questions, and it's very difficult to navigate that. We also felt that from the training with some of the women within the network and the cohort is that they felt when they, through the training, when they tried to address the questions that they were asked, you know, they could feel that the questions were more risk adverse and they wanted to change the conversation to be a bit more promotional. They felt the resistance in the room that they were taking ownership of the conversation. And the conversation was, I guess, that sometimes when men control the question or the conversation, they're seen as their leaders and they're very strong, but a woman could appear to be, oh, she, she came across very emotional or maybe she could be difficult to work with and they will make a judgment in terms of can I support and work with her for the next five or six years. So that is a real challenge for women that how do they behave in a very male dominated world in terms of pitching and that's an area that uh, we're, we're really keen to, to break down and improve but also open the channels and supports that women need this particular funding because we're working with the most amazing women and if they can't get to the next stage and they have tw 10 years in research and development and, um, and they're looking at male orientated teams but maybe not such a defined business model and they're moving along at a, um, a quicker process, it can be disheartening. So I think the collaboration and support is something that is really important to us. Thank you. 
And I would like to turn to you, Monica. I mean, we, we've been discussing today uh, many times that, yeah, I mean, in 2022, but I think, I mean, this figure has not been better over the last 20 decades, only 2% of the funds raised went to 100% female-led teams. I mean, we've been discussing this a lot in the Female Founders Forum, and, uh, and I think it would be very interesting to hear your views also, because you're both an entrepreneur and an investor. Like, uh, how can we explain that? And, and basically, what can we do to make that change? Well, thank you. I think this is a very, very important question. And uh, I see the discussion today is... Um, really inspiring and very meaningful because we speak about many, I would put it like a tool set of things that we really need to, to really to encourage women entrepreneurs. But let me just give you a little bit more about these numbers because it's good for the audience to know what we are talking about. So 2% means 2% of 100 million, 100 billion euros, sorry. So for 2022, 2% of 100 billion euros went to women-led companies, only two. So the rest of the amount goes to, uh, okay, 8% of this amount go, goes to mixed gender teams and the rest of it goes to all male founders. So this is a huge disparity we are talking about. And um, I fully believe that creating skills Create opportunities. This is the first thing. Then educating female founders and mentorship programs really, really help. And this is something that we need to have, you know, a lot in education, uh, in our families changing the changing the stereotypes, many, etc. The third thing, which is uh, really important, we need to educate investors. I would say, as well. Because being an investor, and in my shoes an investor, I see, you know, exactly what Diane says. Sometimes you have unconscious bias to the questions you put to the, invest to the, to the founder. Just because you know she's a woman, and the founder of a company is a woman, you really predict she, that she's going to have a children. So you really, in your mind, somehow Taking the, this question, okay, but if she's going to take a maternity leave, what's about the project? So um, I, I think we really need to, to talk and to speak about the investors as well, and we really need to educate them. But above that all, um, it's all good, and we've been doing this, this for two or three years, or even more, the last 10 years, I would say. Uh, this kind of initiatives have been done, are, are been, are been done across the Europe. A lot of um, networking between women founders and women entrepreneurships uh, are created. But still the number is there. In the last two years, we have only 1%, even less than 1% of change. So if we speed up with this speed <laughs> up front, how, how many years it will take us to change the balance? So we have 2% to make it equal 50. How many years if we do the same thing over and over again? So something has to be changed dramatically, I would say. And this is quotas. And I like very much what Maria Oliveira said, because quotas really work. So we see that there is a European, uh, uh, European Women on Board Directive coming from the European Parliament. It was... Um, it was voted two years ago or one year ago, and it says that 40% of women on boards by 2026 should be women. So how about we think in the same approach, for the same approach in implementing uh, something like this as a directive for public spending, for public finance? And this is something that we have um, uh, discussed on our meeting and our event on 8th of March one year ago in the European Commission uh, to create and to think about quotas. Creating more funding for women founders, creating more opportunities, but also creating quotas, which means that we will have policy, on the policy making level a big drive to change. Thank you. 
And I know we are running out of time, but uh, as a conclusion round, I would like to, I mean, as you said, uh, it, and I think it goes way beyond just, you know, women entrepreneurs or investors only. We need, it's, a, it's a big challenge. We are talking about a societal challenge and we need to really embrace and change the all the society mindset. And, uh, and we are aware that this will take time to change, but uh, every baby step counts. And, uh, and, I, and we, we have now this 24 months opportunity with investor to, to make the change, at least to, to, to start, to continue kink, uh, rolling the ball and uh, make systematic impact. So, uh, Diane, and uh, the question will go to, to all of you, um, how can we best use this project to, to kick this role and, and to make sure that we create impact and we make the change? I believe this project will have huge impacts and a lo lot of different areas, one being that it will help female founders build up their network, they'll have warm introductions to investors and again data has shown that if you're introduced through a warm introduction, uh, you have a higher chance of receiving funding. So we'll take the coldness out of it. We can also support in terms of the education, the resources, the business capabilities. So I think it will have a huge impact. Um, but if I was to choose one, I would certainly go for the network because I feel that no matter all these, this event is so important today and we have many events and a lot of people say, well, you know, we are changing it. The conversations have opened, but they haven't really. And again, as Monica has mentioned, the numbers are there, the data is there. So if the data is there, the facts are there, and I think that we need to support it. But I also feel a big challenge for women when they are having conversations and with um, perhaps investors is they don't, again, around this gender, um, you know, balance is really important, unconscious bias, because I think a real key area that came up for us in terms of our investigation is that the unconscious bias is that, you know, as human beings, we like to work and interact with people possibly that look like us and you know deal and speak with us so I think that a lot of deals also and a lot of conversations are done on the golf course um, because again investors invite potential founders out and they have conversations because men are comfortable with other men and this was the data that was shown that how do we break that in terms of a more personal approach um, overall and I feel that this project can help us with that. Thank you. Salome, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, I think as Jen said, with this project, we have to start a conversation and we are starting a conversation today at the MCHAM and with this event, but we also have to start conversations and bridge the gap between women founders and investors today. They often do not communicate on the same terms or are afraid to communicate with each other. So I would say with this project, we urge women founders to approach investors. We urge investors, both male and female, to approach women founders. And a key words would be, and, and that's really the aim of the investor project, would be uh, network and connection and bridging the gap between all of our ecosystems. We are very lucky to be a consortium of 10 partners from eight uh, different countries. And I think uh, that is... Um, very rich and a true opportunity for us to, to really make a change. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Monica, do you have some words as well? No, um, well, I, I fully agree with what Diane and Salome just uh, said. And yes, we are connecting the dots. Um, there is an ecosystem, there are ecosystems out there. There are amazing initiatives like, for instance, Empower Her. We would love to collaborate. We would love to participate to, to partners to partner with everyone who would like to, to, feel, to feel included and to, 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 to become active and to, to participate in this initiative and in this networking. So uh, I think with, in the exchanging of ideas, of, of networking, of uh, meeting each other, learning from each other, this is what, uh, what will create the more opportunities and will make the environment more fair, diverse, and balanced. Yeah. So thank you very much.